Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at motion graphs and first of all, being able to draw them and then second of all, looking at identifying the motion of objects from graphs. So the first thing we're going to do is look at drawing graphs and we're going to do it for all three properties of motion. So displacement, velocity and acceleration. So our first scenario, we've got a gun that's firing a bullet vertically upwards and there's no air resistance for us to consider. Um, so I always start these graph, this graph from thinking about the acceleration of the object. So there's only one force acting on a bullet and it's gravity or the weight force. So that force doesn't change, therefore the acceleration of the object doesn't change. So that means that uh, the acceleration graph must look like this. So that's the acceleration graph. It's constant and it's negative because it's acting in the opposite direction to the velocity. So again, at this point, if you got this acceleration graph, have a go at drawing the velocity and displacement graphs, and then we'll go through those two. Okay, so if we have a look at the velocity graph, so from the graph on the right, we know the acceleration is constant and negative. So that means the gradient of a velocity versus time graph should be constant and negative. So what we're going to get is something that looks a little bit like this. So this graph shows from its starting until it reaches the maximum height. Now at the maximum height, the velocity is going to be zero before it starts coming back down again. And we've got a gradient which is constant and negative. So again, have a go at drawing your displacement graph. Now we know what the velocity graph looks like. Okay, so if we use the same principle again, so we, can, we should know velocity is the gradient of a displacement versus time graph. And we can see that velocity is always positive, but decreasing to zero. Therefore, the gradient of the displacement versus time graph should always be positive and it should decrease to zero, which means the graph is going to look like this one you can see on the left. So those are the three graphs we should have had for the three properties of motion. OK, so that's our first scenario. Let's have a go at another one as well. OK, so this time we're going to look like a skydiver falling from an aircraft, but this time we are going to factor in air resistance. So what I like to do is have a go at drawing the three uh, different graphs and then we'll compare them to mine and have a look explaining why they look like that. So pause the video and have a go at sketching the graphs now, then we'll go through them. OK, so now you've had a chance to draw them, let's go through them. And so again, I'm going to start with acceleration. OK, so first of all, uh, to start with, the skydiver is going to be stationary when they just dive out of the aircraft. And that means air resistance is going to be zero, because when you're stationary, you have no air resistance. So therefore, it's going to be, the acceleration is going to be minus 9.81, the acceleration due to gravity. And what happens is as you go faster and faster, air resistance gets bigger and bigger, which means the resultant force acting on you gets smaller and smaller until it becomes zero. So we know the acceleration is going to end up at zero at some point when air resistance is equal to weight force. What you sh should also know about air resistance is it's proportional to the velocity squared. So air resistance gets a lot bigger the faster that you go, which is why the graph curves in this way here. Then if we have a look at the velocity graph, so if we look at our acceleration graph, acceleration is always negative. So therefore, our, the gradient of our velocity time graph should always be negative. And we see acceleration gets smaller until it hits zero, which means the gradient should get smaller until it hits zero, which is why the graph looks like this. It's downwards, which is why it's the negative graph. We can see the gradient is always negative, but decreases to zero. Then for the displacement graph, the velocity we can see is always negative, um, but the velocity approaches a constant value. So that's what we're going to look for in the gradient of our displacement graph. It should always be negative, but the gradient should approach a constant value, which we can see it becoming a straight line at the end. So that's what our graph would look like for our three properties of motion. 
Okay, so now let's have a look at some slightly different scenarios as well. So what we've got here is we've got a graph and we've got a bowling ball on a hard floor and the ball has been hit a number of times by a hammer. And just so we can use this for reference, when we say the velocity is positive, that means it's moving towards the right. Okay, so first one, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to get you to have a go at each of these four. So that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to pause the video and have a go at answering each of these four questions. And then once you've had an attempt at them, we will go through each of the four. So that's what you should do now. Okay, so you should now have had a chance to pause and have a go through those. So let's have a look at what we should have had for each of them. Okay, so at time marked A, in which direction is the ball moving? So we said positive velocity means it's going to the right. Down here at A, we can see the velocity is negative, which means it must be traveling to the left at that point. Um, so very straightforward to start with. We look at the next one. Um, well, at time marked a is the ball to the left or right of the origin. So in terms of the information you should know to answer this question, you should know that the change in displacement is the area under the velocity time graph. And what we can see here is that the area above the x-axis is much greater than the area below, which means it's been displaced to the right in the positive direction. Um, so at A, it's traveling to the left, but it's displaced to the right. Okay, so at B, in which direction did the hammer hit the ball? So the ball is travelling to the right, and after the hammer have hit it, the velocity has decreased. And that means the force must have acted against the motion, or in the opposite direction to velocity, which means it must have acted to the left. That's how it slowed the object down. And then last one, at C, which direction does the hammer hit? Uh, the answer here is what the velocity is constant, therefore there is no hammer strike at C. Velocity doesn't change, therefore there cannot have been a force acting on the ball. That's what Newton's first law tells us. Okay, so that's the bowling ball problem. Let's have a look at a slightly different scenario. So, we're just going to think about an object and we're moving along the positive distance axis. So what that means is, is displacement is not allowed to be negative. OK, and that's going to be important in terms of selecting answers. So we've got um, some velocity time graphs. And what you need to do is identify them that show in each of these different scenarios. So again, what I'd like you to do is pause the video now, select what you think the answers are, and then we will review them and explain why we get certain answers. Okay, so you, you've had a chance to pause the video and select your answers. Let's go through them one by one. So well, part A wants us, which velocity graph shows an object going away from the origin at a steady velocity? So steady is another word of saying constant velocity. And if it's going away from the origin, that means it's going to be a, in the, a positive velocity because it's restricted to being in the positive displacement section. Uh, so if we look through, we can see that C is a constant positive velocity. So that's the one we're looking for. Uh, some of you may have selected D for this one, but that would mean it's moving towards the origin, which is why we can't use that one. OK, so which velocity graph shows an object standing still? Uh, this one is more straightforward. We just want the one with showing velocity equals zero all the time, which is clearly option G. We want to see which one shows an object moving towards the origin at steady velocity. So this is basically the opposite of question A. So we want the one with a negative constant velocity, which would be D. Uh, that's what we want. Um, which velocity graph shows an object changing direction? So the thing to look out for, if your an object changes direction, the velocity should go from being positive to negative or from being negative to positive. Okay, that's what we're looking for. And there's only one graph that fits the bill, and that's graph E. It's the only one that shows a change from positive to negative in this case. Which velocity graph shows an object that is steadily increasing its speed? So what that means is the rate of change of speed is constant, therefore the acceleration is constant. And so 
first of all we can eliminate all the ones which show the speed decreasing so that gets rid of b gets rid of e and we want a constant acceleration which means we need a straight line graph but a straight line graph in which the velocity is increasing which is clearly graph a that's what we want okay so final scenario we're going to have a look at so we've got an object on a slope but with a spring at the bottom which allows it to keep bouncing back up the slope and we're going to take its initial uh, motion to be in the positive direction so going up the slope and the bottom would be the spring and that's going to be our origin so again there are five different things to look for and identify on the graph so pause the video now and have a look at those and then again we'll review each of the five okay so now you've had a chance to pause and have a go let's take a look through okay so we want the point is when the car is at the highest point on the track so if we think about the motion here at the highest point its velocity is going to be zero because then its velocity will become negative to come back down the track so we're looking for a place where the velocity is zero which is shown by point b so that's what we're looking for there and you can see that b is essentially asking the same question in a different way so again it's asking where it's not moving or where velocity is zero again b uh, we want the point where the cart is in contact with the spring so the spring is going to cause the object to go from going down the slope to going back up the slope so it's going to change direction so it's going to make the velocity change from negative to being positive and we can see at d there's a this very quick change but it's going from a velocity that's negative up to positive so that's clearly where it's in contact with the spring at this point the car is moving down the track towards the origin so it said moving away from the spring was positive so we're looking for somewhere with negative velocity um, so that's going to be c where you can see it's moving down the slope towards where it's going to hit the spring at the bottom there so that's what we want we want c and then finally we want a point where the cart has an acceleration of zero so Acceleration is the gradient of a velocity time graph. So we're looking at somewhere that has a gradient of zero. So what we're looking for is a horizontal line, which there are none. So there are no places with a horizontal line. Therefore, there is nowhere where the acceleration is zero. There is always some kind of acceleration going on in this graph. Okay, so that finishes this video looking at motion graphs and looking at how we can draw them and identify features from them. Um, I hope you found that useful to, in terms of reviewing this topic. If you have any questions about anything you've seen, please feel free to comment and ask me and I'll hopefully get back to you soon. But thank you very much for taking the time to watch.